In A Clash of Kings, Daenerys Targaryen meets three Seekers, Piat Pri, Zara Zoendaxos, and Quaith, who are kind of like the three wise men of the Bible. They come after a miraculous birth beneath a special star and give gifts to a possible prophesied saviour. But anyway, Piat Pri is a douchebag warlock guy, Zara Zoendaxos is a douchebag merchant prince guy, and Quaith is a mystery. She wears a red mask and calls herself Quaith of the Shadow. Like Melisandre, she says she's a shadowbinder from a shy. A shadowbinder seems to be someone who uses shadow magic, like Mel does to kill Renly and Courtney Penrose, and a shy is a city at the edge of the known world, steeped in darkness and magic and mystery, much like Quaith herself. Beyond her name and where she's from, we know nothing about this woman. Yet she repeatedly appears to Danny, offering cryptic advice. What's her deal? In Karth, Quaith tells Danny to beware of all who might want to take her dragons, which, as Jorah says, is good advice. Later, she says magic is becoming more powerful in the world of ice and fire, which is something we've heard before, but she implies that it's happening because of the birth of Danny's dragons. Then Quaith tells Danny to leave Karth. Danny asks where she should go, and Quaith says this To go north, you must journey south. To reach the west, you must go east. To go forward, you must go back and to touch the light, you must pass beneath the shadow. At first, Danny thinks this means Quaith wants her to go to a shy, which is, after all, easternmost and southernmost of the great cities of the known world. So she asks, what is there in a shy that I will not find in Karth? And Quaith just says, truth. It's probably possible for Danny to go to a shy. It's about as close to Karth as Marine is. Some suggest Danny might pass through a shy, go all the way east, and approach Westeros from the west. But there's good reason not to believe that Danny goes to a shy. George R. R. Martin has said that we will see a shy only in flashback and memory, if at all. Further, it seems really silly to have such a cryptic riddle solved immediately after we hear it, right? So it seems unlikely that Quaith means for Danny to go to a shy. But she means something important, because in the next book, in Slaver's Bay, Quaith appears to Danny again, seemingly in a dream, and repeats the go back to go forward thing. In Dance, Quaith appears a third time, and this is where she speaks the most. Danny asks Quaith if she's dreaming, and Quaith says no, but she also says that she's not actually there and that only Danny can see her. She then says the glass candles are burning. This may explain how Quaith keeps appearing to Danny when she sleeps. Glass candles are magical Valyrian artifacts that allow communication over long distances, kind of like Palantiri in Lord of the Rings, or just like, uh, phones. But glass candles, according to Marwan the Mage, allow you to enter a man's dreams and give him visions, which sounds like what's happening to Danny. And it's plausible that Quaith might have a glass candle, it's not like they're super rare. The Maces of the Citadel have a bunch, the Targaryens of Amon's Day seem to have had some, and someone called Urathon Nightwalker has some, in Karth, where Quaith presumably still is. So it looks like Quaith is using a glass candle to communicate with Danny. That's one puzzle solved, but Quaith gives us more. She says, soon comes the pale mare, and after her, the others. Kraken and dark flame, lion and griffin, the sun's son and the mummer's dragon. Trust none of them, remember the undying. Beware the perfumed seneschal. This is basically a list of everything and everyone Danny has to deal with. The pale mare is the disease that ravages Slaver's Bay, the others probably the Yunkai. The Kraken's Victarion, and maybe Euron, the Dark Flame is Macquarro, the Lion Tyrion, the Griffin John Connington, the Sun's son Quentin Martell, the Mummer's Dragon is probably Aegon, maybe hinting that he's no true Targaryen, and the Perfume Seneschal could be a bunch of stuff, maybe Resnak or Varys, or the ship Tyrion was on. Interestingly, Quaith mentions all these people, but not Marwyn the Mage, who's also coming for Danny, and it just so happens that Marwyn uses a glass candle. Could he be in contact with Quaith? In any case, overall that stuff's pretty straightforward, and pretty accurate too, right? Danny notices that Quaith predicts the Pale Mare and Quentin, but she still doesn't understand the go-back-to-go-forward stuff. Everything starts to make sense in Daenerys X, A Dance with Dragons. In this chapter, Danny has a climactic kind of a vision quest at the edge of the Dothraki Sea. She eats some funny berries, flies around on Drogon, hallucinates, a lot like that scene in Tenacious D, actually. But the point of this for Danny is a huge turning point in her character. All through Dance, she tries to peacefully and diplomatically rule the city of Marine. She marries Hisdar when she wants Dario, she chains away her dragons when she wants them free, she opens Daznak's pit and allows Yunkish slavery though she thinks it's wrong, all the while telling herself, if I look back, I am lost. 
That's the mantra by which she suppresses the violent, uncompromising side of her personality, the Targaryen side. And that's how this chapter starts. She tells herself her home is in marine, she needs to bend before the whip. If she looks back, she is lost. But in this chapter, she looks back. Quaith appears and says, remember who you are, the dragons know, do you? And her vision quest begins. A vision of Viserys reminds her of her Targaryen blood. The grass reminds her that her dragons are her true children. A vision of Jorah reminds her that Marine is not her home, that her war is in Westeros. He says, remember your words, and Danny says, fire and blood. So at the conclusion of this chapter, Daenerys says, to go forward, I must go back. She flies off on Drogon, hunts and eats a horse, thinks of Dario, and the chapter ends with the appearance of a Dothraki Kalasar. Danny is going back to the Dothraki, back to the Targaryens, back to fire and blood, and it all starts with Quaithe. This is what Quaithe means when she says, to go forward, you must go back, and the go north to go south and east to go west stuff presumably means the same thing, just a little more poetically. Admittedly, the bit saying to touch the light you must pass beneath the shadow doesn't really fit this interpretation very well. The fact that Ashai is called Ashai by the shadow does make it tempting to believe that this means Danny will go to Ashai, but again, that seems unlikely. So maybe the light and shadow stuff will make more sense later. For now, we've got a pretty good explanation of Gwaith's prophecy. To go forward, you must go back refers to a transformation of Danny's character, a return to violence and power and fire and blood. Maybe she'll lead a horde of Dothraki. Maybe she'll go burn her enemies in Slaver's Bay. Maybe she'll finally go to Westeros. And maybe, with the loss of her gentler side, she'll become a bit of a bad guy. This is a big deal for Danny. But we still don't know what's up with Quaith. Who is she, and what does she want? To answer these questions, let's go back to the reign of King Aegon IV Targaryen, more than a hundred years ago. Known as the Unworthy, Aegon famously fathered lots of bastards, including the original Daenerys Targaryen, after whom our Danny is named. But he also fathered someone called Shiera Seastar, who according to one theory, is Quaith. Now, for Quaith to be Shiera, she'd have to be more than a hundred years old, but funnily enough, Shiera Seastar's half-brother and lover was Brynden Rivers, aka Bloodraven, aka the Three-Eyed Crow, who Bran finds alive beyond the Wall, and who, like Quaith, gives cryptic guidance from afar. If Brynden extended his life, and was close with Shiera, maybe Shiera could extend her life too. Of course, Quaith is not a tree person, but the World of Ice and Fire says Shiera's mother was said to be a sorceress, and George R. R. Martin has said that Shiera was reputed to practice the Dark Arts. The same is said in The Sworn Sword, specifically that she bathed in blood to keep her beauty. So it seems totally possible that Shiera might magically extend her life. Further, there are strong symbolic connections between her and Quaith. Shiera is associated with stars. Her mother named her Star of the Sea. And in Daenerys 10, in the Dothraki Sea, the stars whisper Quaith's prophecy to Danny, and Danny sees Quaith as a mask made of starlight. Quaith's whole role in the story is symbolically that of a sea star, a guiding light that shows Danny the way when she's lost on the Dothraki Sea. Being Shiera may explain Quaith's motivations. It makes sense that a fellow Targaryen princess, or legitimized bastard, whatever, would want to guide Danny back to her Targaryen roots and return to Westeros. Also, Shiera is said to have spoken a dozen languages and surrounded herself with ancient scrolls. You gotta wonder, might some of those ancient scrolls have said something about a saviour called Azor Ahai? That prophecy seems to come from Ashai, so maybe Shiera Seastar went to Ashai for that reason, and she helps Danny because, like Benero and Amon, she thinks Danny is Azor Ahai. Or she might have just gone to Ashai for general shadowbinding black artsy stuff. Or maybe she's never even been to Ashai and she just says she has and wears a mask and takes the name of Quaith to hide her identity. She was a famed beauty in her day. Maybe she doesn't want to be recognised. Maybe she had to leave Westeros to hide her unnaturally long life. We could speculate all day. The point is that there's fairly strong evidence that Quaith may be Shiera Seastar. It's far from certain. Some things don't fit, like Shiera's eyes are different colours, and Danny doesn't notice that in Quaith. But there are still strong symbolic connections between the two, and being Shiera may explain Quaith's motivations. Whoever she is, Quaith's prophecy seems to refer to a transformation in Daenerys' character, from peace and restraint to fire and blood. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments whether you think Quaith is Shiera Seastar, and what topic you'd like to see next.